let's talk about the effect of ring sticking on engine performance. So as you'll know, you generally have a piston in an engine and that sits inside a cylinder liner. Now above that piston, you have combustion and below the piston, you have crankcase oil. And the piston, even while it's moving up and down within the cylinder liner, is having to seal combustion gases from the crankcase and seal crankcase oil from getting into the combustion chamber because each of those is a bad situation. Now the top ring is the combustion ring and it helps seal combustion gases from getting inside the crankcase, which is called blow-by. Now these, um, these rings are actually pretty difficult to get on. You need sort of special tooling to get them over the, the, the top land. And once they get in there, they, they are actually able to press up against the wall of the cylinder liner and form that seal. Now the bottom ring is called the oil control ring and that helps prevent oil from the crankcase from getting into, uh, into the combustion chamber. Now that seal's not perfect, right? The oil control ring is designed to control the thickness of the fluid film. So we still need some oil right on the cylinder wall because the piston needs to be lubricated as it travels up and down. But the, the oil control ring helps control the thickness of that. Now, I am aware that um, most pistons will have more than two rings, right? So uh, typical configuration is three rings, but even on some large marine engines, you'll have up to five rings. So generally the ones at the top are the ones that are helping seal combustion gases and the ones at the bottom are helping control the oil and then intermediate rings might perform one or both of those functions. Now let's kind of zoom in a little bit on the combustion ring. So there are a variety of profiles here, but they're all trying to achieve the same thing. So if I have here, um, you know, combustion gases, which are at high pressure, exerting pressure on uh, the faces of this particular ring, then what you can see is that there is a net force that is pushing the ring up against the cylinder wall. And that's what's helping improve that seal. Now, if we zoom in a little bit further, generally they have kind of a tapered profile at the edge. And what that helps do is it helps control the amount of oil by scraping it back down into the crankcase. So for example, if the motion of the piston was downward, right, then the friction on that edge is gonna cause it to kind of rotate, as I've shown on the picture here, and that's gonna help scrape oil back down into the crankcase. Now, one thing that you can imagine is that if we get some, something like sticky or if we get um, abrasive material or solid material in behind uh, that, that piston ring, inside the piston ring groove, um, then it is going to inhibit the motion of, of the piston ring, right? And that's going to inhibit the, the quality of the seal. Now, what kind of materials can get in there and cause that, that ring to stick? Well, I've covered this in other videos, so I'll go through it very quickly here. But effectively, it's a combination of polymerization and oxidation. So as part of the auto oxidation cycle, we get the promotion of, of free radicals, right, which can interact with hydrocarbons, right, and cause a chain reaction, which lengthens the chain of the hydrocarbon, right? It polymerizes and sticks a whole bunch of different um, molecules together. And so you get much heavier hydrocarbons and molecules which are longer have higher viscosity. So that's why you get that sort of gummy, thick, um, sticky mess, right, in some engines. Now, theoretically, this reaction could go on to infinity, but in practice, what happens is that if it encounters another free radical, then they react together. They now have a shared electron pair, right, and it forms one large molecule. If you add oxidation to this, right, so we're gonna add some oxygen atoms into this molecule through the oxidation process, we can produce things like alcohols and we can produce carboxylic acids. Now, the important thing about this is that you'll notice now the, the overall molecule has some polarity to it, which means it's going to be, a, it has an affinity for metal surfaces, right? And so that's why you could get some of that oxidative material getting in behind uh, the piston ring and sort of sticking it inside the groove. As a result, we now have increased clearance and the combustion gases can get down into the combustion chamber. Now let's have a little bit of a think as to why that might be a bad thing. So the byproducts of, or the, the, the bad byproducts um, that end up in exhausts, right? They are supposed to go through some kind of exhaust gas remediation, right? 
um, on diesel engines this is going to be a little bit different to petrol engines but ultimately they're supposed to go through a catalytic converter and the design of those is to convert uh, convert NOx and carbon dioxide into inert nitrogen as well as carbon dioxide that's the purpose of them so now we have NOx and carbon monoxide but instead of going to the exhaust although they the majority of it will still go to the exhaust, but we'll have a little bit of it getting past the piston rings and into the crankcase. Now, why is that necessarily a bad thing? Well, nitrogen dioxide plus water will give you HNO3 plus NO. And the key here is that HNO3 is actually nitric acid. So that's a strong acid that fully dissociates in water, right? And it's going to raise the acid number of your oil. That's dangerous for a couple of reasons. One, it raises the corrosive potential of the oil. So if you have concerns with, let's say, for example, corrosion of big end bearings, that is a, a known problem in some engines, then the formation of nitric acid is not a good thing. Secondly, acids help catalyze further oxidation. So it's going to reduce the life of your oil. So there's a couple of reasons why having acids in the crankcases is not an ideal situation. The other thing is that there are going to be other, um, let's say, contaminants which are now able to get past the piston rings as well. So soot, for example, is that incomplete combustion of fuel. And sometimes you actually have fuel. So if you have a fuel dilution problem, then the fact that there is uh, uh, an inadequate seal between the piston and the liner, your fuel dilution problem is only going to get worse. So what are the effects of soot? Well, soot, if you get a whole bunch of soot loading in your oil, is actually going to increase the viscosity, basically because it's increasing the amount of solid contaminants that are in the oil. And so solids tend to increase viscosity. The other problem is it's going to drastically increase wear. So what happens is that soots try, um, soot particles by themselves are not all that dangerous, but when they agglomerate, which is that they start sticking together, they, they form abrasive particles, which work their way through the engine, much like sand would and they can be very abrasive and, and we'll, you'll start to see it in the iron levels of your oil analysis. So that's how in, it increases wear. With fuel, we sort of have the opposite and the same problem at the same time, in so much as it will decrease the viscosity because both diesel as well as petrol are much lower viscosity fluids than engine oils. So it will decrease the viscosity of your lubricant but by decreasing the viscosity, now we're unable to form that fluid film that we need to lubricate, for example, um, the cam lobes or um, the big end bearings. And as a result, we're going to get more metal on metal uh, movement and more relative motion, more uh, adhesive wear, and that's going to increase the overall levels of wear. So overall, having stuck rings is a bad thing.